Hello everybody, I'm Arden, and welcome to another episode of Glacial Awakening. As you can see, I am sitting back here in a small little hollowed out area in my storage room where I have put in some actual bulk storage. But I haven't actually finished furnishing this area, nor have I decorated it because I just don't actually feel like building today. If that's okay with you, I don't actually know what I want to do. Other than make some storage I'm currently not using for anything. But we will fix that. But right now, I feel like we have some more important things to do, and it has to do with these devices right here. Because one of our next quests up in chapter two here is making diamonds. Do diamonds sound good? Because they sound good to me. Hello folks, sorry to interrupt, this is Editor Ard here. Uh, content creator Ard has been severely reprimanded. Somewhere between this episode and the prior one, he completely forgot what he had been doing. So uh, we're going to talk about diamonds again for a bit, which is good because he didn't actually finish the quest. So sorry for the repeated information, I cut it down as much as I reasonably could. And there's still some things that we actually did need to talk about this time, so it sort of works out. But uh, I think we can agree, content creator art needs to step up his game some, right? And that, I think, solves the diamond problem. Except it just totally didn't because I didn't pick up the ore, which means I didn't get credit because this doesn't have silk touch, and now I just realize I have a huge problem. And right about now, I am glad that I uh, made multiple scenting cores and didn't turn them all into grass because here's some egg on my face. So I grabbed my light stabilizer because this won't work with the heavy stabilizer, and we're going to put it down right next to the heavy one. So that's there. We're going to leave the block of redstone there, and we're going to put down our core as normal and start it up. Now that we have our diamond ore, we're going to drop down another sentient core right next to it. Because this is sitting on the light stabilizer, which routinely pops these off. And we're going to start this up. And we're going to go claim our diamond ore. That was overly convoluted when they could have just checked for diamonds. And now that we have diamonds, well, you think we just continue on the quest. But, uh, I think we should actually do some gearing up. And gearing up means not just making diamond equipment. It means making an enchanting table. But what do we need for an enchanting table? A whole lot of books. Luckily, I have an easy way to make paper nowadays. Although it looks like I'm going to have to recharge the altar soon. Every time I think I'm being sneaky and doing something smart, can't make books without cowhides. Can convert cowhides from rotten flesh if we had liquid starlight, but that's a chapter away yet. So, uh, I guess I'm not enchanting anything yet, unless I get lucky with the strainer down there. Maybe I should toss some more bait in there and see if I can get something. Still, unfortunate, but we can at least make some diamond gear. All right, now I don't feel so immediately threatened by every single zombie I see out in the world. You know, assuming I remember to actually put this on and don't want to run with just my flannel on like I have been. I, I'm bad at remembering to do this. Wearing the draconic armor in E2E just, uh, that created some bad habits, okay? All right, so now that we've at least got diamond armor sorted out, I guess we can move on to the next quest which is bottling some ghosts because we can't go into the nether. So to do this, we need to do a couple things. We need to make bottled ghosts and we need to make spirit of calling. And the spirit of the calling is made from the bottled ghosts. We'll get to that in a second, but the infused iron is just iron on a natural altar, so that's easy. The bottled sunlight is just the cork bottle we did before that you just right click in the air, diamonds are diamonds. And then the bottled ghosts are another bottled sunlight, some tallow, which is just rotten flesh melted down, which we've got, as well as, well, crush another rack, which we get by blowing up cobblestone and blaze powder, which is awfully kind of expensive when you think about it. So I'm not looking forward to that part because I don't have to keep making blaze powder, but uh, you know, we do what we must. And here we go bottling during an eclipse, but this should work. And ghost successfully bottled, but that's only the first half. And now we've got this step done, which gets me a new sword. Appears to do about the same damage as well. Although there's probably certainly some trick to this. Well, the Hearthwall book doesn't really say, have a whole lot to say about this, other than we need soul sand to make this normally, and it, it says it's, it has a high enchantability rating, whatever that means. But you know, free sword that doesn't even hold right. So, uh, man, I got all sorts of questions about this. <laughs> And it looks like these Spirits of Calling are used a little further up in Nature's Aura at the uh, offering table, which we're going to be making in a little while. But next, let's see how this burst seed down here works, the netherrack one, because it looks like they explode and just shower stuff everywhere. 
might be good use for the gravity block actually. And they're not too hard to make if we already have netherrack and we just need a shard of the morning star. All right, so I made it and I'm down in this little cave area that we cleared out with the grit vase last time. Let's put it on the ground and see what happens. Oh wow, that was not joking. So it took uh, about a minute and a half, but from four netherrack we now have 38. So that's actually not too horrible, honestly. All right, and doing that gets us a stone burst seed, which I assume does the same thing, which might be an easier way of getting stone as well. Looking into it, it looks like there is a handful of different types of burst seeds, which includes a crystal burst seed. But this one's a bit trickier because it requires a crystal catalyst, which is just a whole bunch of the shards surrounded by another crystal. So that's actually not a bad deal, honestly. You know, depending on how many it gives you, but I, I can't imagine it's more problematic than just making them manually. So, uh, that's not bad. Next up, we now have a forking path. So let's start at the top and make the token of sorrow. Oh, and this already sounds terrible since this involves gas somehow. But to do this, we need tokens of sorrow and a weeping block. The tokens of sorrow are a ritual of the forest, which is not honestly that bad to make because the main thing would be here would be fish and meat, which we have, as well as the gas tier. And the gas tier, however, comes from the weeping block. And the weaving block is a coring recipe with sentient cores and a shard of born might, as well as a red nether brick. So that doesn't actually sound too terrible. Let's figure out where I go wrong. Ah, that was fast. I found it. Uh, we need nether wart. Thankfully, we can get that with just some mutation paste, so this isn't too horrible. And while I could just continue making more nether rack that way, I figured I might as well make some soul sand in the process. Because soul sand can be made in a freezer with sandy netherrack, which is just another wart to sand and netherrack. So I've got this slowly cooking here in the freezer. All right, here we go again. And now we have gas tears. All right, and now we have one more hitch that I hadn't realized, and that's that we need meat here, which we don't actually have because it doesn't use any that we can actually get. What we can, however, do is take the raw chicken that we have or the raw venison and mutation paste it into the, one of the other types. So that's what we're gonna do. I always forget to put the gold powder down for this ritual. I even put this platform here to do this, but it's all set up now, let's do this. And that's the token of sorrow, which gets us some paper lamps, which are nice and decorative, and I probably will not end up using. The next step up is the token of fear, and this is really similar, but it's gotcha here is the soul sand, which, haha, we just made, so we've got that line around, so this should be simple enough. Okay, so it turns out there is actually a catch. You need feathers, which we don't have yet, and feathers we can get from eggs, and eggs we can get by tossing limestone rocks into living souls. But if we can get eggs, why would we convert those into feathers when we can convert those straight into chickens and start collecting them that way? So I think that's what I'm gonna start with. All right, pair of chicken and a couple leftover eggs. So I guess we can go bake the feather now, but now these are a renewable resource once they finish growing. All right, and then while I was here, I set up I, what I hope is some basic automation using the gravity block, except I'm not actually using this gravity block, I'm using the small mini ones with a range of two. But if we just huck some items out, you can see that it gets pulled into the hopper, although I don't know if this block, Yep, it reaches all the way to the corner, so we're good. So it should pick up any eggs and feathers from here on out. All right, and now I've got this one set up as well. And token of fear obtained. And that gets us more rotten flesh. Hooray! But I think with that, I'm going to call it a day. It's actually been pretty productive since we got diamonds and we got a bunch of stuff made. Now we have chickens. Bark, bark. And did I mention the diamonds? Did I? Mm-hmm. Not enchanted, but... Oh, speaking of, I did get some more enchanting books. Although it's not that amazing, but this is probably the best one I got right here, the Sharpness 3 Knockback 2. I might want to consider using that. Although I probably shouldn't put it on an Amethyst Sword now that I can make diamonds. I probably should put it on a Diamond Sword, and maybe a Tetra Diamond Sword at that. But as you can see, I got some other weird ones like Shadow Step, which might be useful, maybe, kind of. Another efficiency book so we can combine those. And then stuff that I just don't need. Although I did get an okay one for a bow that I'm currently not using. But like I said, it's been a pretty good day so far. So if you found the episode interesting or entertaining, please consider leaving a like or subscribing if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.